the input. Okay, so x is the input, f of x is the output. What we want to do with an inverse function is we want to reverse that so that now if x is taking you to f of x, okay, the input's taking you to the output, we want a function that's going to reverse that and take you from the output back to the input. So something that undoes the function. I'll just give you a simple example like, you know, say for example you multiply something by 2. Okay, so if we put 3 in here, okay, so 3 is our input, 6 is our output. What would be the opposite of multiplying by 2? Dividing by 2. So what you can see here is if you put this output in, 6 divided by 2 takes you back to 3. So multiplying and dividing our inverses, adding and subtracting our inverses, squaring, square rooting our inverses. There's a lot of different uh, functions that are inverses of one another. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to find an equation, find a function that undoes that original process. So when you take a look at uh, inverse functions, okay, and their graphs, what you'll notice is that the graphs are reflections over the line y equals x, this 45 degree line. So for example, if you were graphing y equals 2x, that would have a slope of 2. If you're graphing y equals 1 half x, that would have a slope of 1 half. And you can see these graphs are reflections over that line y equals x. But uh, suffice it to say here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to reverse that whole process of going from the input to the output and so I'll show you some more examples on, on how we're going to do that. So there's a couple different ways to approach this. One way is like an intuitive way. And what you can do is you can say, all right, following the order of operations, I'm multiplying x by 5, and then I'm subtracting 10. So we'll just write times 5 minus 10, right? So multiplying by 5 and subtracting 10. Now if you wanted to reverse that, you're going this direction, okay? You're going to add 10 first and then divide by 5. So what our equation would look like is you're going to take x, you're going to add 10 first, and you're going to divide by 5. So this would be your inverse function, f to the minus 1. This represents the inverse function. So that's one way to do it, just in an intuitive way. Instead of multiplying by 5 first, okay, and then subtracting 10, you're going to reverse it. You're going to add 10 to x, which is the input, and then divide by 5. But what most teachers teach and what most books uh, show is just a simple process that I'm going to show you now. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to think of f of x as y. You're going to switch the x and the y. And you're going to solve for the new y. So to do that, we're going to add 10 to both sides. We're going to then divide by 5. And now you have y equals or we could say f inverse of x instead of y equals x plus 10 over 5. This is our inverse function. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Another example, f of x equals x minus 2 divided by 4. So what I'm going to do is think of this as y. I'm going to switch the x and the y. So x equals y minus 2 divided by 4. And now I'm going to solve for the new y. So I'm going to Multiply both sides by 4. Okay, I'm going to add 2 to the other side. Okay, and now instead of writing y, I'm going to write f inverse. So this is f inverse of x equals 4x plus 2. Okay, last example, y equals x squared plus 4. Now, I showed in another uh, past video how when you look at these graphs, okay, y equals x squared plus 4 looks like that. It's a parabola that's been shifted up 4. But you see how it fails the horizontal line test? So that means that this equation, this function, doesn't have an inverse. But what we can do is, if we just look at half or just part of this graph, let's just say this right branch here, where x is greater than 0, x is greater than or equal to 0, okay, so we're working with this right half, now it does pass the horizontal line test. It only crosses at most once. So now we can go ahead and find the inverse of this graph. We're going to do the same process we've been doing. We're going to switch the x and the y. Okay, so instead of y equals x squared plus 4, we're going to write this as x equals 
y squared plus 4, okay, and we're going to solve for the new y. So I'm going to subtract 4. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So we have y equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 4. Okay, now remember how we talked about how inverse graphs are reflections over the line y equals x, this 45 degree line? If we reflect this graph over this line, we're going to get a parabola that looks like this. Now you can see it fails the vertical line test. This is not a function. But if we're just working with this positive branch right here, okay, the part to the right of the x-axis, the reflection of that over the line y equals x is this part here that's above the x-axis. So we're only going to want the positive one here, not this negative branch, okay? So if we're finding the inverse of this equation where x is greater than or equal to 0, we want y equals positive square root of x minus 4. If we were looking at the left branch here, we would want the negative portion. So this has been a, an introduction to finding inverses of functions. If you need to review the video, go ahead and do so, and I'll see you in the next video.